In moving to a low-carbon economy, the role of buildings is absolutely crucial. Working with buildings, finding a way of reducing those carbon emissions from buildings, both in their construction and their use, is absolutely critical if we're to meet the challenge of climate change, moving to a low-carbon economy over time. Built in 1967, Hampshire County Council's Ashburton Court loomed above the old city of Winchester. A monument to an age which believed everyone would drive to work and that new office buildings would be bright, comfortable and efficient. It was a vision that didn't last. So Hampshire County Council decided to recycle it. We believe that actually low carbon refurbishment makes business sense for a couple of very good reasons. Firstly, embodying energy efficiency in the refurbishment process will lead to cost savings over many years thereafter. Secondly, customers, in the case of buildings, tenants, are increasingly demanding low carbon buildings. You could do a less dramatic refurbishment, um, but we've taken the view that if you did something more significant and you strip the building right back to the concrete frame, you can get significantly more benefits. In the end, the reason why the county council is doing it is it will be a much more efficient building, both in energy terms and in space utilisation. From the beginning, Hampshire County Council involved the Carbon Trust, whose role has been to advise and help integrate low-carbon technologies and cultures through the Low Carbon Building Accelerator programme. For us, it's about getting involved, rolling our sleeves up, seeing how these projects actually work, learning from industry and working with industry to try and encourage managers, um, engineers and architects and, and, and all those involved in the process to perhaps think about the carbon saving agenda alongside all of their other priorities for projects. What the Carbon Trust have been able to do is to work with us as a team, sit back, hear the dialogue, see the dynamics and then be able to contribute at the end of that by saying, why don't you try this, have you thought about that? I think there has been too much emphasis on buildings that, that look green and you know, there are numerous examples of fundamentally quite bad buildings that just have you know, a few PVs or wind turbines bolted onto the roof. It's much more sensible in a way to simply not require the energy than to find very, very clever ways of generating it. I mean, just don't use the stuff to start with. By having air moving across the top of these ducts creates suction inside the wind trough, which allows air to come through and across the floor, floor plates and then up the ducts, which open into the, uh, into the wind troughs at the top. We're going to use a more intelligent lighting system in this building. Obviously, it'll be high-efficiency tubes and high-efficiency switchgear, but it will also be linked to daylight sensors outside of the building and inside of the building and presence detectors. We're not trying to do something that's fashionable here. We are trying to do something that is more efficient. By the beginning of 2009, the first phase had been occupied for a year and the rest was nearing completion. We're going through this four-stage process that involves the last stage of monitoring the building. So not only do we look at how this building has been designed and what its energy performance um, we believe will be, but also we look at, in reality, what have we actually achieved with the building through a year of operation. It makes you think about how well is it doing and are we, have we achieved the goals that we set out to achieve. There are lots of lessons that we can, we can learn and bring forward to new buildings, refurbished buildings that we'll become involved with in the next uh, number of months and years. It's about communicating with the, the staff and the people moving into the buildings on how the building services and the building itself is designed to operate and what their interaction is. I find it quite bright and a cheerful place to work in. I like it very much. I like the open plan. Um, it feels nice and airy. The heating and the lighting, I think, work very, very well. Um, we moved in last January, and really we've not had any problems, so it's been quite positive. It's interesting as you work through the day to see how the lighting changes as it adapts to the outdoor lighting. I think working in a refurbished building means that it's coming back to life again. Rather than crushing a building and starting again by building new, we're actually putting something um, in place and enhancing it for the next 50 years. It's been very good to see the building forcing changes in staff behaviour among small things, but very significant things like the recycling. You feel horribly guilty because one's marked landfill, so everything goes into the one that says recycling. People take this project more seriously when we say actually it has been a carbon trust case study 
and uh, it's a partnership working amongst this whole series of local government agencies, local and central government agencies, with a, the objective is to improve the whole built estate and reduce energy, because we, we clearly can see what the impact that that will have. We know that commercial buildings represent a very significant chunk of the built environment in the UK, that these commercial buildings are refurbished on a very regular basis. If we can just get that refurbishment cycle to take a slightly longer term view in terms of investing in energy efficiency, investing in green technology, it'll have a massive impact over time on the efficiency that we see through our buildings and our overall carbon emissions in the UK. If you would like to see the whole story of Ashburton Court on film, then contact the Carbon Trust.